background to me, just a little bit, um, I spent an awful long time in my career in Scottish Power, in the last eight years in the renewables business. And Alan's right, I have chaired numerous committees and reports for Scottish Government and for UK Government, um, not least of which the, was the Course Reduction Task Force that Will was referring to, uh, that we published in 2012 for Charles Hendry at the time. Um, and I've been past chair of Scottish Renewables and Renewable UK. I'm telling you all this not to large me up, it's to tell you I believe in the renewables industry, hugely. We have tremendous opportunities in the UK. We have some challenges, but they're not uh, insurmountable challenges. I think that some of them are relatively easy to unlock if we just focus on things a, ha a bit harder and prioritise activities an awful lot more. Um, and so when I was asked, did I want to help set up the catapult a year and a half ago now, I suppose, uh, I jumped at the chance. I believe, stemming from an awful lot of work that I've done and, and just contact with the industry over many, many years, um, there is an awful lot that technology can bring into our sector in terms of innovation, uh, leaps forward in terms, of, in terms of skills and economic benefit and contributing significantly into cost reduction. And actually, I think it is something that is deeply undervalued in our sector. So a brief introduction, first of all, to the catapult programme. There are seven catapults, if you're not aware, in many different sectors. They're listed at the top of the, the screen here. It is a very large programme supported in it, ultimately from BIS, uh, but via the Technology Strategy Board. Um, and they are new businesses looking to fully, and I mean fully, integrate activities between industry, academia, and the public sector, and really looking to uh, support small businesses and small ideas and making them very large and making them very economically valuable in the UK. Uh, and that last bit I will focus on probably quite a lot on delivering the know-how in what we do here. If we just look at round three that the, the guys have talked about this morning, you've got the largest programme in offshore wind in the world. And OK, we need to capture manufacturing opportunities out of that. That, that goes without question. But a massive opportunity comes in being able to know how to design, build, and very importantly, operate those power plants, and I'll call them power plants, not wind farms, for decades. And that's the exportable skill that we should be chasing for the UK. It's a bit like oil and gas as the city centre or city of Aberdeen, with all the expertise based in there. For renewables, round three, and offshore wind, and ultimately, wave and tidal is our economic opportunity to do the same. Um, why are catapults being called for? Um, a few years ago, uh, UK government, which actually was under the Labour administration, asked Herman Hauser, how do the Europeans and other countries support small ideas and make them big? And it was reported back, you need these innovation centres. You need people who are expert enough to spot the good ideas that are, and work out how to commercially and technically support them and make them much bigger. Um, so what our catapult is doing um, is as a, doing that linkage between research and small ideas. So think of universities and spin-offs from universities, but also SMEs. And how do we get it up into industry on in the, in the right-hand side in that chart here? And quite often, innovation kind of sticks in that narrow oval there. You, people, when, when people think about innovation and offshore renewable energy, uh, they think of very large devices going into the water costing many, many, many millions of pounds and quite often, understandably, they fail. And that's not so good for the investors uh, and it's not so good for those who don't necessarily understand the sector more. It's actually good for learning and development and moving forwards. But what I want the catapult to do is extend that oval deeper into the earlier stages of research and truly bring out what the value that we have in our uh, academic institutions and small businesses and elsewhere and make sure that when we're going to do the commercialization of technologies we really do know what we're talking about so if you think about the experiences of round one and round two and those kind of projects where's the learning coming from from those projects before we go and spend billions in round three these are things i want to unlock in the catapult but this is why i think catapults are necessary and what is when you're in the catapult family and you see what the other six catapults are doing, it is fantastic in terms of the cross-sector transfer knowledge opportunities. 
uh, that come from aerospace, from automotive, in the medical industry, and in the satellite applications industry, all have principles that we can and technologies that we can use in our sector. Um, so our vision, quite simply, abundant, affordable energy from offshore wind and wave and tidal. Very simple. We want it to be affordable. Um, and we want lots and lots of it. Um, let's be clear. So round three in our marine programmes start to give us that. So we are building a large centre. It's based in Glasgow, but I stress it serves the UK um, of deep technical expertise. At least 100 people in the next four to five years to be employed. We're already at 40. Uh, and very clever people, people far cleverer than me. And Neil Simpson sitting in the, in the room. Put your hand up, Neil, just say hello. Uh, he's one of those guys. We have technology experts, project manager experts, commercialization experts. All I do is bring them together and, and ask them what they're doing from time to time. Um, but it's a big, big program if you think about this catapult program. And it's a new thing and it's, and it's different, at least in terms of its scale. We have some fantastic things going on in innovation in the UK. But, uh, and, and really good agencies that do an awful lot of innovation, but a lot of it is disparate, not connected too well together, and we want to see what we can do to pull a lot of that together. So, um, and I am quite clear that even having this wonderful centre in Glasgow with at least 100 people in it, um, we're not going to revolutionise technology in the industry ourselves. Collaboration is an essential part of our strategy, working very closely with others. Um, I've established an industry advisory group and a research advisory group, and some of the names of those participants are listed here. Uh, it's very important that we stay close to industry, quite clearly. We want to know what is industry thinking about its technology challenges. Let me also say, though, we also think there are things that we can bring as challenges to the industry. Um, things that we are spotting are not done well enough, yet there are opportunities to do it better. Um, that's part of the value proposition from the catapult and the research advisory group. So I've got 10 universities acting as a focal point for me, but not exclusively, on how do we uh, identify what research is emerging across the UK academic landscape and elsewhere and in foreign fields. Um, and also, what is it that industry needs that research should be focusing on? So they act as a kind of uh, conduit uh, between the industry and the funders that provide all the, these research opportunities. Um, it's very important to us that we stay close to both academia and industry because ultimately it's about bringing everything together so as we can prioritise and focus on the absolute essentials of what need to be done, needs to be done to make this industry succeed, to make it big, to make it abundant and to make it affordable and much more welcomed into the electricity portfolio than it currently is. And this last point is just an emphasis on we're working very closely with those, particularly in the public sector. So we have an MOU with the Crown Estate, and we're working very closely with the Crown, uh, with Carbon Trust, with EMEC up in Orkney, with Wave Hub in the South West, and so on. Very important that you see as an industry and other stakeholders that we're all prioritising and pulling together on all of these things. So the types of things that we're getting into, um, we've tried to break it down in, on the left-hand side here into research, strategic programs and SME, small business support. Um, and let me just clarify what I mean about research. We're looking at it in-house and commissioned and collaborative, but it's not university research. I am not displacing university activity. Universities tend to focus, not exclusively, but tend to focus on what you call technology readiness levels so of very early stage ideas of between zero and three. Um, we're looking at what's emerging from that that needs to go on further into the market and how can we support those types of ideas uh, to move into that higher end of, of, of the industrial scale. Clearly, as we start to do things uh, that, for example, start to demonstrate activities and, and projects with you know, spending real money in CapEx to have a demo kit in the water, for example, you still need earlier stage research to support into that. That's an opportunity for the academic landscape. Um, I'm going to talk just in a second on the strategic programs because one of the things I want to emphasise, I kind of touched on it slightly earlier, is um, we have to learn from what is already going on in the industry. And if you think about where can I get hold of operating data for what's going on in wind or even marine uh, of late, so as I can see how well it's doing, uh, good luck. You're very unlikely to find it. Um, and it's an important point. If you think about the growth of conventional generation over the decades, whether it's gas, coal, or nuclear, um, they've all had benefits 
of being global industries, quite often nationalised industries, and when somebody makes a mistake and a power station falls over, they learn of what's gone wrong and it's rebuilt into, or it's redesigned in the next uh, design of, 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 uh, of that kind of power plant. In our sector, it's not really there. It kind of is, but not really. And I want to see what the catapult can do to unlock that hugely. So um, we're delighted to kick some of that off in conjunction with our colleagues in the Crown Estate. There's this project with the glorious name of Sparta. Um, it's essentially a performance database. It's asking those who already operate uh, wind turbines or power plants to put some data into it. We anonymize it and they can then see how they're benchmarking against other uh, uh, competitors in the marketplace. Sounds dead simple, sounds dead easy to do. Very, very difficult to get people to participate in it. But um, I think it's fair to say the industry is now seeing that they really do need to collaborate and think about working far more closely with their in industry colleagues to move this industry forwards. And what I want to stress out of this is, it's data. Data is essentially Im important uh, for the development of this industry. The more data we can all lay our hands on, the more you can analyse that, and that turns it into, into information. And it's information you can make investment and design decisions on the back of. So a huge part of what the catapult will be about is collecting data and working with it securely and, 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 on, and anonymously so that you can have the confidence that you can exchange your data with us without any kind of compromises. That's very important. So this neutrality point that I've put at the bottom of the slides here is essential for us to move forwards. Um, we're not just in wind power, we're also in wave and tidal power. And our colleagues in the Carbon Trust have been developing a, or have had a programme for quite some time now, I think a successful programme, called the Offshore Wind Accelerator, where developers, i.e. wind farm owners, have put money into a common pool. It's been significantly levered, I think, through DEC, uh, and that has allowed them to go forward and actually do some real trials of new technologies in anger. Um, so we're working very closely with the Carbon Trust to replicate that for uh, the, the, the marine sector. We've already got some utilities and developers uh, signed up to do this. Um, and you can see here the types of uh, uh, areas that we want to uh, focus on on the technology, at least in phase one. It's not the easiest project to set up. We all know the marine in terms of funding and finance has got its issues at the moment. Um, but what it does do is act as a catalyst for the industry and other stakeholders to get together, scratch their heads a bit and go, well, what is it we could actually do if we worked far more collaboratively together. I have this personal viewpoint that um, the marine sector, and particularly wave power, struggles quite a lot because um, you've got some very clever people inventing technologies to convert energy from the sea into electricity. And that's where an awful lot of their IP sits in whatever that conversion device is. But to get to market, or get the product to market, they've also got to invent how you connect that up electrically and how you do all your health and safety systems and how you look at your operations and maintenance strategy. Everything that a that customer, such as a utility, would expect. And that, I think, is where you get an awful lot of dilution in the marketplace. It's one thing to expect winners to emerge and everybody else you know, kind of dies off. But we've got so many good technologies going on in this industry, I want to see a lot more collaboration where we can challenge the boundaries about IP and work more collaboratively on the things that are common to everybody and that would allow those companies to focus much more exclusively on how do you convert uh, sea power into electricity. I think that's what their real being is. We want to see what we can do to support them in that endeavour. So it's a very short presentation so conclu to conclude the Catapult programme is a gear change in the UK uh, for looking at innovation and supporting it in ways that have not been done at least for many decades and to look to replicate what goes on elsewhere in the world. Um, we are making tremendous progress as a country in building out uh, offshore wind and, and wave and tidal is, is, is coming up behind still smaller scale quite clearly. But we've got to see much more cost efficiency. Uh, technology is a major unlocker of that and I think again undervalued in terms of what it can actually do. Um, we've also got to see economic value, and that means jobs. Now, we'll be publishing a report later on this week, because our new offices in Glasgow are being opened on Thursday uh, by the Secretary of State, Vince Cable. Um, but I've commissioned an economic report to look 
Uh, there's lots of reports that I've uh, been looking at costs. I want to balance that up with, well, what does it mean by chasing all these costs? What will it mean in terms of jobs and value to the economy? And there are some very, very interesting, frankly, big numbers coming out in that report on Thursday, so do watch out for that. So innovation, I think, is a key driver for getting the industry uh, into that position where it is a lot more loved politically and people do actually understand and, and appreciate the value of what it means for the economy and for direct and indirect jobs. Uh, Catapult was making a big impact in that area. And I'll stress again, I'm not doing it alone. We have to collaborate and work very closely with everybody across the industry, with the academic sector and the public sector, allowing prioritisation of the key issues to be brought fully to bear and for those issues to be resolved. Uh, particularly if they're technology issues, uh, so that we can lead in the UK and we do have an exportable industry that we can export and create value from, as I say, for many, many decades. Thank you very much.